I want you to open your Bibles, if you would, to Matthew's Gospel. We, we were here last week, and I wanted to continue just for a little bit. And, and um, you know, we've talked about this thing called the rest of God. We've been talking about that in and out of the messages, and that there is a rest for God's people. And that rest is found in trusting Him. Well, first of all, it's found in knowing Him. Because uh, if you really know God, you'll trust Him. Because God is not a man in the sense of uh, He doesn't break His word. He keeps His word. Say this out loud. God always keeps his word. word. Amen. And what's required of us, his people, is faith. It's it's faith in him, trusting him, uh, knowing that whatever happens in the natural, there will always be things changing in the natural. It's just part of of the temporal life we live in. And um, he said in his word, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will not pass away. And and I don't know if you've ever, we've all experienced this, so so, uh, where someone has made you a promise and then they broke the promise. But God does not make you a promise and then break it. He honors his promise. Now, not in your time frame, in his time frame. That's where the, the power, the, they call these two things the power twins. It's, it's faith and patience. It's trusting God and then letting him have his way no matter how long it takes, no matter how hard it looks. Can I have an amen? You're, just, you're, you're committed. You're sold out. You're going to serve him no matter what. You're going to serve him if you got any, nothing or if you got everything. You're not going to be dis- distracted by, uh, by the things around you. You're only going to be focused on Jesus. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. <clears throat> so anyway, Matthew, the 16th chapter, we'll just begin reading there and we'll go from here. In Matthew 16, Jesus asked the disciples uh, a question in verse 13. He says, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And of course, their response was of what they heard. Well, they said, well, there's some people saying you're John the Baptist, others saying that you're Elijah, and some saying you're Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. They didn't, you know, they couldn't recognize him. They were blinded spiritually until God opened their eyes on the day of Pentecost. So Jesus went on and he says, but who do you say, that, uh, who do, whom do you say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, well, thou art the anointed one. That word Christ means the anointed one. Thou art the anointed one of God, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this to you. That word revealed, you didn't get this revelation uh, by natural understanding. It it didn't come from your head, it came from your heart. Um, For flesh and blood, or man, has not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto you, thou art Peter, and upon this rock, this revelation that you just received regarding me, the anointed one, upon that anointing, upon that rock, I'll build my church. Now listen, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Amen. And then he says this, and I will give thee unto thee the keys of the kingdom. Kingdom of what? The kingdom of heaven. He says, uh, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, between services, I didn't read this of the first service, but I felt compelled to go. I uh, just made a copy of the message, message Bible. Where are you at? I made a copy of the Message Bible, and, and um, it says this. And I don't know if you have time to put it up there, um, Tina, but uh, message, uh, message Bible in verse 16, 17 and 19, it says this. Now, Jesus came back and says, God bless you, Simon of Jonah. You didn't get that answer out of books or from teachers. My Father in heaven, God himself, let, let you in on this secret of who I really am. Isn't it interesting? Thank you. Isn't it interesting that the demons knew who Jesus was? But the scribes and Pharisees failed to recognize him. Isn't that something? I mean, the, every demon, he had to shut him up. Shut up. Everyone said, oh, you're the son of the living God. You're, you're the anointed one of God. And he'd say, shut up. Because he had a mission to do, and he just didn't want it to get out. And, uh, and, 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 and of course, except for in his timing. And then he says, uh, and now I'm going to tell you who you are, really are. You are Peter, a rock. That's a, that was a, it, it means the word Petra, uh, Petrus, it's, it's a rock. But the word next one, upon this rock, that's the word Petra. It's a huge rock, a massive rock. Upon this rock of revelation or truth, I will build my church. Oh, let me see what it says here. I will put together my church. And I like this, a church so expansive with energy that not even the gates of hell will be able to keep it out. Isn't that good? Hallelujah. Amen. Divine energy. Hallelujah. Not energy from a crystal stone. 
energy from the rock of our salvation. Hallelujah. And then he goes on and says this, and that's not all. You will have complete and free access to God's kingdom, keys to open up any and every door, no more barriers between heaven and earth. Amen. Uh, uh, earth and heaven. A yes on earth is a yes in heaven, and a no on earth is a no in heaven. Hallelujah. Just, I mean, we're going to, oh, mercy. Next week, or this coming Wednesday night, I'm going to teach on, you don't want to miss this, I'm going to teach on Jesus, the high priest of your profession, and what that really means, because you have access right now into heaven, it be, before the very presence of God, hallelujah, where you can take your petitions and your praise and your prayers, hallelujah, and get God's response right away, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise for that. He's given you that. You have access there. And if you don't understand that Jesus is your high priest, you'll never go there. Or you'll think that we're here and God's a million miles away and, you know, and hope to God you get his attention. No, no, you get right in his face, praise God, with reverence and worship and you'll have his attention. Can I have an amen? This is what, this is what Jesus was teaching that day to his disciples. Amen. He was teaching about this access to God's presence where, there, there, where his power and his provision will be revealed to you. So today, just for a moment, I'll talk about revealed knowledge versus unrevealed knowledge. Revealed or revelation knowledge. The eyes of your understanding being opened. That's what Paul prayed for the church. God opened their eyes so that they can see. Would you agree with me? How many are, how many right now, you see things from the Bible you never saw before, before you were saved? You, Amen. And how many of those things thrilled your heart? Praise God. Amen. They thrilled your heart because you saw for the first time his life through the lens of God's word. You saw through the eyes of Jesus. Um, you know, it's interesting. Oh, there's so many things I could say. But in Luke's gospel, the sixth chapter, this isn't in the outline, but in Luke's gospel, the sixth chapter, Jesus was addressing his disciples on what a Christ-like life would be. He's teaching them because up to that point, you know, an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. I mean, you know, uh, you pull your sword out and cut the guy's ear off or whatever, you know. But Jesus was teaching a complete different gospel. Amen. And it was a gospel of love and a gospel of faith. And he says, why? And, and he says, can the blind lead the blind? And the answer is no. The blind can't. Somebody's got to see. Amen. See, I, I'm amazed. Uh, I believe this is true. That in every family, God has a saved one. God has someone that's saved so they can stand in the gap for the rest of their family. Amen. Amen. Say this out loud. If God could save me, he could save my family. I just want to hold on to that because it's true. If God could save you, then he can save anybody in your family because none of them were as bad as you. <laughs> okay, I'll back up a little bit. It's true. Praise the Lord. If God could save you, he'll save anybody. Amen. Amen. And your part is to stand in the gap for them and pray for God's mercy in their life, and God will be merciful to them just as he was to you. So revealed knowledge versus unrevealed knowledge. How do you explain? This is what I shared earlier. How do you explain how over a 3,000-year period, the Jewish leaders studied, they memorized, they prayed, and they rehearsed the Torah? I mean, every day. The, the, the writings of the prophets, including the Psalms and the Proverbs, which together, listen, concealed the redemptive promise of God's Messiah, yet when he came, they didn't recognize him. Isn't that amazing? So, there, so revelation knowledge is a gift from God. And I mean this. When I went to Ramah, I, I, uh, of course, Vicky was pregnant with Andy, and uh, we had our two little girls, and um, uh, we got down there, started going to school, went for, uh, school to 8.30 till 11.30 noon, and then uh, I came home, she had lunch for me, and then I took off and went to work. And, and, but what was amazing is this, that for four hours every morning, it was nothing but revelation knowledge. I mean, just flooding out of these men and women of God. It was teaching on, God, on, on the faith of God, the righteousness of God, the love of God. I mean, it was absolute revelation, revelation, revelation. I was, I mean, it, and it, it went inside of me. It, you know, I, I, we had a lot of books to read and I hardly could read any of them because I was so busy taking care of my family. But that revelation knowledge got in inside of me and stayed there. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. So every time I took a test, I'd ace it. Because it was on the inside of me. It was alive. It wasn't here in the head. It was in my heart. 
That's where revelation, that's where it comes from. Amen. Amen. Say this out loud. God of heaven, heaven. reveal to me the secrets secrets of your word. word. Amen. Amen. Now, when he does that, revelation isn't given to you just for inspiration, though it will inspire you. But revelation is given to you for application. It's not the hearers of God's word that are blessed. It's the doers of God's word. And that is the hardest thing. It's great to hear something, but it's another thing to do it. Amen. But but my point is God will grace you by his spirit to to, um, do what he's graced you to do. And if you agree, say amen. Amen. Jesus tells us in the parable of the sower about this spiritual blindness. He said this in Matthew 13. The disciples came to him and said, why do you speak to the people in parables? Again, a parable is simply a natural story to reveal a spiritual truth. And Jesus said, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given unto you, but not to them. Who is the them he's referring to? To them who closed, who closed their hearts and their minds to the Savior, or that they even needed a Savior, okay? So it was close to them. They, they were unteachable. See, when you come to church, I tell people all the time, and this is just simply a Norwegian expression. I mean, you know, it's just, if you're teachable, you're reachable. If you're teachable, you're reachable. Amen. We don't take the word of God, pull things out of it to say something it doesn't say. We take the word of God in context and we tell you exactly what it says before and after so you get the full counsel of God regarding that. Say thank you, Lord. We're not going to take something and try to make it say something it doesn't. I, I'm going to stand before God one day as a minister of the gospel and be held accountable that I taught you the word of God and nothing more or nothing less. Amen. Amen. Everybody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. That's what you have here at Faith Family Church. 50 years, actually, you know, yeah, 50 years. I'll be 50, uh, 50 years. I got saved 50 years ago this coming May. Uh, I, Biggie, I thought that was interesting. I just thought about this this morning. 40 years ago, this, this May, the third week in May, we came up here to Sioux Falls. 50 years ago, the third week in May, I got saved. I thought that was kind of cool, you know. Anyway, that, that's just between us. It was, <laughs> amen. So anyway, to that note, let me just say this. Your inspiration, your strength, and the guidance you need in your life, listen, make it the word of God and nothing else. Of all the things that have been going out there in the last few months, driving the body of Christ insane, stop listening to it. Just focus on the word of God, which will reveal the will of God, which will impart to you the strength of God, the hope of God, the faith of God. Amen. I said, amen. You don't have to be concerned about anything else. Stay in faith and God will have his way in your life and in mine. If you agree, say amen to that. So, so he went on and says, so whoever has, has what? A, a humble heart of receptivity. That's exactly what he's talking about in the parable of the sower. Whoever, whoever has a tender, uh, open heart of receptivity, even what he has, it, it, excuse me, whoever has a heart of receptivity will be given more, more what? More insight, more revelation, more impartation. And he will have an abundance. Abundance of what? Spiritual insight for overcoming the world, the flesh, and the devil. That's what you need in your life. Do you understand that? You need spiritual insight. I know today a lot of people, you know, they, they go to counselors and stuff, which is fine. I, I, that's, but listen, if, you're, if, if you don't get your counsel, your, your, the foundational counsel of the Spirit from his word, all that other counsel isn't going to work. I'm just telling you that. He sent his word to heal us. Psalms 107.20, and to deliver us from our destructions. We're very, well, we're very good at self-destruction. Amen. I mean, apart from the Lord. Let's go on. So who, whoever does not have what, a heart of receptivity, even what he has will be taken from him. That is why I speak to them in parables. Through seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear. Excuse me. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them, in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. What is that? You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will ever be seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart, watch this. This people's heart has become, 
That means it was something different before it had become. Before this, it had been tender and open, but now it had become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. See, when you come to church any given Sunday, and you're, you're you, you know, you just, I'm, I'm sorry, but you get out in the world, it's a battle. There's warfare constantly. And, but when you come inside these doors, the first thing you should do is not examine your neighbor, but examine yourself. Yes. I mean, get your heart uh, open and get it, get it fixed. If there's anything in there that's, you know, not right, get it right in, through a heart of repentance so that when God speaks, you'll be able to hear what he's saying. Yes. I mean, I'm serious about this. I mean, the more open we are, submissive to the, to the will of God, uh, according to his word, the more our eyes are open to see what we have to see. I was sharing this in the first service, but we have some teachers here today. But when I was a little boy, I don't remember what time, maybe eight years old. I don't remember when, maybe Vicky could remember, uh, when we were taught fractions. And I, I mean, I was so proud. I, man, I could add and multiply. But when they brought them fractions up, I, I just went tilt. And yeah, the little Norwegian mind just exploded. I couldn't figure out how to, t one, uh, one quarter times one quarter, five eighths times five, I couldn't figure anything out. And I literally, at one point, the teacher's leaning over me and tears began to flow down my eyes and because I, I was so frustrated why I, I, I could not see what she was saying. And so, uh, just in my heart, just in my heart, I said, God, help me. I need help with this. And I mean, it didn't get out of my heart. And bam, just like that, my eyes were opened and I could see exactly what she was talking about. I'm telling you, it came from the heart of God. I believe every, every witty invention that people get, they get from God opening up the eyes of their understanding. Because it doesn't, I mean, creation... Creativity doesn't come from the devil. He can only mock and pervert what God has created. Can I have an amen? So, otherwise they might see with their ears, uh, eyes and hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn and I would heal them. Oh, well, look what he says. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. I mean, before that's why when I lead people to the Lord, um, I often say, not all the time, but I often say you need to do three things now that you've accepted Christ. Number one, you need to get into a good Holy Ghost church like Faith Family Church where the Word of God is preached. Amen? Amen. Amen. Number two, you need to open your Bible, begin to read it, and, you, and you're saying, well, yeah, but I don't understand the Bible. Bible. Uh, yeah, but now you will. Now that you have accepted Christ, he's opened your heart, and you'll be able to see the things that you need to see. Amen. Amen. I said amen. amen. And then number three, find good friends good friends to uh, godly friends that'll help you grow in, in the word of God. But the thing was, the thing was, open your Bible, read it. And then, I mean, there's been things in my Bible I'd read it all for years. Sir, I don't understand this. I, I, I just, I, I don't understand it. I don't, and then one day I read it, wow, oh my goodness, I see it now. <laughs> oh, man, I, don't, I get excited when God opens things up to you. It's so awesome. And then I'm going, oh no, it, it's for a test. <laughs> It's for a test. Amen. In Hebrews 2, oh, I want to read this, 2 Corinthians 4. It says, Paul, again, writing about this blindness. He says, the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not, watch this, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. You know, I always think, what is the definition of insanity? Here it is. Your life is completely corrupt, lifeless, dead, tormented, oppressed, and you still refuse to open your heart to Christ. Amen. Isn't that something? But see, you agree with me. Now that you see, aren't you glad you accepted Christ in your heart? Amen. For now, now you can see how good he is, how merciful he is, how kind he is, how good he is. Hallelujah. The Bible says it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. Can I have an amen? You see, your eyes are open. Wow, this is great, Lord. It's just an inspiring thing. But the God of this world, oh, listen, blinds the minds of them that don't believe. And, and, but I just want you to know, Paul wasn't just talking about the, the, the heathen or the unbeliever. 
he was literally, he was talking about any believer that refuses to believe and obey God's word. All of a sudden, slow but sure, you, you, you don't even know it. It's, it. Oh, let me read this verse and I'll tell you about it. In Hebrews 2, here's what, here's what Paul wrote to the believers in, in the Hebrew uh, community. We must pay more careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard so that we do not drift away. And, and if you ever went fishing, I mean, literally, we've gone fishing and, and, and it's just a gorgeous, calm day. And we're just at focus, man. We're catching fish. And all of a sudden, we feel a bump and we're up against the bank. We didn't even feel ourselves drifting. And that's the way it is spiritually. I mean, if you really, uh, you know, if you really knew you were drifting, you'd probably do something about it. But it's so subtle. All of a sudden, you find yourself way outside of God's will in your life and wonder, how in the world did I get here? Drifting. You drifted away. Can't blame the devil. He goes on and says this. For if, oh, let me finish it. We must, uh, yeah, verse two, for if the message spoken by angels was binding and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape? Escape what? All the trials and temptations that are coming in 2021 if we ignore such a great salvation. And see, once you begin to drift away from the word of God, listen, listen, so does your faith in God and all his promises. You just keep drifting and drifting away. And I'm telling you right now, when the Bible talks about a remnant, often a remnant in the Bible, it's amazing what he was able to do with a remnant. Lift your hand if you want to be part of the remnant of God in the last days. I do too. I mean, I want to be a remnant. I'm not going, listen, if your friend falls away from God, you stay with God. Don't follow them. Amen. If someone gets offended, don't get in bed with them. Don't get in bed with them. They get offended, just let them get offended. You stay in love, you stay in faith, and God will bless your life. Amen. I've had to cut, I've had it through the years, we've had to cut relations up, up just in our, before we were saved. Nine years, we, we were in business together for nine years before we went into ministry and secular business, and there's a certain relationships you couldn't afford to have because they'll drag you away rather than towards God. If you agree, if, or can you relate to that, say Amen. It's true. So the degree of spiritual receptivity is, listen, is determined by each of us individually and by how well we steward our hearts and our minds. Well, the Apostle Paul in Romans 12 calls it the metamorphosis process. Metamorphosis. That means you separate yourself. It's not something about a, uh, the caterpillar. It'll, it, it, it instinctively knows. Well, here, let me share the scripture. Romans 12, verse 1. I beseech ye, brethren, by the mercies of God, Paul says, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed, that's the word metamorphosis, by the renewing of your mind. Amen. See, that's why, that's why I couldn't afford. Boy, when the elections were over on November 3rd or 4th, no more news. I took it off my radio, I took it off my TV, no more news, none. I only want the good news. I only want the good news. And that's what you want for your life. Otherwise, you'll be filled with confusion, listen, and depression. You'll think that we're the ones. We are the answer. Come on, we have the answer. We are the answer. It's never been in the political realm. Never. So, stay, hey, stay with the word of God and you'll walk in peace. And you'll walk in love. You don't want to shoot anybody. Amen. Amen. That's a little more funnier than it was responded to. I'm serious. You get just go stressed out. I mean, it's ridiculous. Amen. So anyway, God gave us this word. 2021 is the year of the local church. In the Old Testament, listen to this. In the Old Testament, well, let's bring it up to 1940. In 1948, God birthed Israel again. Israel was reborn as a nation. And what did God do? He began to woo Jews from around the world, the four corners of the world, back to Israel. And they came, listen, and they're still coming. They sent planes in. See, they didn't know how, how they didn't know if that door, like in Russia, the Russian Jews, they didn't know if that door would close. So they sent, they sent Israeli planes into Russia, into South Africa, into, uh, into Asia. They sent 
planes in to bring thousands of Jews back into Israel because they were wooed by the Lord to come back. And I thought, is that what you're doing, God? Because it's the year of the local church, are you wooing the body of Christ, praise God, to come back home? Amen. I believe he is. I believe, and I said this, and I don't mean to be insensitive, but I'm telling you, there's going to be a COVID-21, a COVID-22, a COVID-23, a COVID-24. Something is going to stir you, shake you, to try to keep you from God's house. But I believe God is wooing you to come back to the place what changed your life and will keep changing your life, praise God, because everybody here uh, misses people that are not here because we are a body. We are, and when you're not here, it's like an arm gone. When you're not here, it's like a leg gone. We need, the, I mean, the greater, the, the greater capacity of uh, numbers you have in church, the greater measure of anointing that you'll have in every service. Can I have a name? Yes, amen. Give God praise for that. So I believe God is wooing us back to himself to return to the local church where God wants to manifest his glory. Amen. Matthew 11, Jesus prayed. He says, at this time, Jesus prayed this prayer. Oh, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise and clever and for revealing them to the childlike. Yes, Father, it pleased you to do it this way. My father has entrusted everything to me. No one truly knows the son except the father. Uh huh. And no one know, truly knows the father except the son. Watch this. And those to whom the son chooses to reveal himself. And it's not that God has favorites. It's not that at all. In fact, he said in, in Matthew, teaching on the Beatitudes, he says, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. And I'm, not, I'm preaching to the choir here. You're here today, so I know you're hungering and thirsting after righteousness or the truth of God's word. Amen. And the Bible says you'll be filled. In Luke, the 14th chapter, and it so fits today's society. And it really does. Now listen, he, in Luke, the 14th chapter, Jesus, again, shared a parable to reveal the spiritual truth. And what was that? A master made a great supper. A great supper. I mean, I'm telling you, he went all out. And I'm in filet mignon, in um, uh, uh, cordon bleu, whatever it is, chicken. Oh, I mean, he went all out. Now you're getting hungry. I better close. And then, I mean, he... He went all out and invited, he invited every, every, all of his friends. Now listen to this. He invited all his friends and every one of them, every one of them had an excuse. And the excuses were threefold. Business cares, worldly cares, and family cares. And that's exactly what distracts the body of Christ today. Nothing's changed. The human behavior hasn't changed. And God knows and the devil knows. That when you get distracted like that, you are set up for the enemy to attack your life. Amen. 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 Or you won't pass the test that, that is facing you at that moment because you won't have the internal strength to do so. So, I mean, it, it, nothing's changed. So what did he do? He, he called. He said, okay. And he's, he, of course, he's frustrated. He's angry. He tells his servant, you go out to the highways and byways. You compel the lame, the halt, the blind, the dysfunctional, the retarded. You, you, you invite them so my house can be full. And the Holy Spirit said to me one day, just not long ago when I was reading that, he says, what's so sad about that story is that all his friends were the lame, the halt, the blind, the deaf, the retarded. All his friends were, but they didn't recognize they were. Amen. You're here today because you recognize you are in that family. That you need God's help. Can I have an amen? Every day in your life. Amen. Listen, when you focus on the word, it creates faith, hope, and love. When you focus on the world, it creates doubt, fear, and unbelief. If you agree, amen? I'm going to close here. Musicians, you can come. Amazing how fast these days go by. These. I want to read uh, Isaiah 28. But before I read it, I want to say this. Pastor Vicky, uh, five years ago, um, I think it's five years ago, God really began to discern her heart, the importance of prayer, the importance of praying. And uh, so she started a prayer service. And of course, you know, a lot of people took it lightly, you know, yeah, they're just going to pray a little bit, you know. And, you know, she really wanted a prayer service so that people could come and be trained in how to pray. Why? Because people aren't praying. And what's so beautiful about that setting is 
that not, a, not only is it extremely anointing and prophetic, but, but it's training ground. It's helping you to learn how, how many, come on, how many want to learn how to pray effectively? Amen. But to, so to do that, you need a teacher. And, and, and I'm not just saying it because she's here. I said in the first service, she is, she is an anointed prayer warrior. She's anointed not only to pray, but to teach on prayer. It's powerful. And so God raised this up. Why? Because God knew, God knew that 2021 will be the year of the local church and the local church would have to learn how to pray and pray effectively. And I'm talking about praying, being led by the spirit, not praying, oh God, bless me, my wife. Uh, and my kids, us four, no more. He wanted us to be able to learn, learn how to pray effectively. So, listen, so when crises are going on in America, that we can target that. Uh, God told Billy Brim many years ago when, that, um, when, when Oklahoma City, that building, that business building was bombed, the Holy Spirit said to her that if you would have been praying effectively, we would have known the warning before it happened. Amen. And isn't it interesting when the towers came down in 9-11 that uh, when they came down, the church, people ran to the churches for two weeks. And once that was over with, back to norm. And we can't afford to wait for another 9-11. We can't. Because I believe that if we're praying effectively, God will move on the hearts of our leadership to see what's going on and, uh, and, and intervene uh, for the sake of America. Can I have an amen? But here's what it says in Isaiah. So she started this. Jesus says, my house shall be called a house of prayer, listen, of all nations, that word nations means ethnicities. That's why there's such attack today uh, uh, on, on, on black and white America. It's to divide us. Not to unite us. It just stinks. It's rotten. I hate it. Amen. It's just disgusting. But it's to divide our nation. That's what it's all about. It's an attack and assault of the devil. And we need to recognize it's the devil. That's right. Amen? Amen? We need to recognize it is. My house should be called a house of prayer of all nations. Amen. And we're going to, Faith Family Church is going to be known as a house of prayer. Amen. Let me read this and we'll close. To whom will he teach knowledge? Asked the drunkards. Again, Isaiah is prophesying Israel was in a state of spiritual ruin. They didn't even know God. And so they're disgusted with this prophet Isaiah. So they're expressing and venting their animosity towards the man of God. To whom will he teach knowledge? Asked the drunkards. And whom will he make to understand the message? Those who are babies, just weaned from the milk and taken from the breasts. Is that what he thinks we are? This is exactly what they are even worse than that. For it is his prophets repeating. They said, oh, we hear the same thing over and over again. Oh, it's just, we hear, hey, just, the, we hear the same repetitious prayers. The same thing over and over again. If they just heard it once. If they just heard it once, but they didn't. Because their eyes were closed. It is his, uh, for it is his prophets repeating over and over, precept upon precept, rule upon rule, uh, here a little, there a little. No, but the Lord will teach the rebels in a more humiliating way by men with stammering lips and another tongue. See, we, we teach here, not as a means uh, that uh, we teach here the baptism of the Holy Ghost or the evidence of speaking in tongues. And I did say this a couple weeks ago. I would rather see the fruit of the Spirit than to hear somebody spraying tongues without the fruit of the Spirit. But you can have both. And you should operate in both. He says, but with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, says Isaiah, and teach them his lessons. To these complaining Jews, the Lord said, this is the true rest. What? St stammering lips and another tongue. This is the true rest, by the way, by the way to true comfort and happiness that you shall give to the weary, and this is the true refreshing, yet they would not listen. Now listen, some of you, maybe most of you, maybe many of you are filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, but how often do you use it? Well, this is why this service is so important, because you get to practice, you get to practice something that pushes you forward, that it's like Randy, you know, he just about killed me weightlifting years ago. I'm so glad I quit. Anyway, no, uh, but... <laughs> But because he kept pushing me, you can do more, you can do more. 
And that's what Pastor Vicky, she pushes you, pray, pray. Some of you can, you pray, some of you pray, Shandala, and you think that's spiritual. Just, I mean, come on, break through and learn how to pray effectively and powerfully so that during the week, God can come upon you by the Holy Ghost and hallelujah, you'll be interceding and standing in the gap for someone at that moment, praise God. So important. It isn't just about having a prayer language, but with stammering lips and another tongue, he'll speak to his people. Amen. Amen. Would you stand? We're going to pray together. Say, I'd like to take just a moment to pray with you today, especially regarding a personal relationship with Christ. If you've never asked Jesus into your heart, I'd be honored to lead you in a salvation prayer. What is salvation? It's the free gift of eternal life Jesus offers any and all sinners who recognize their need for God's mercy and saving grace. This divine salvation not only changed my life 50 years ago, but also my destiny. So if you're ready, would you please bow your head and follow me in this prayer? Dear God in heaven, thank you for your unconditional love and for offering me your eternal life. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart to be my Savior and Lord. I accept the forgiveness of all my sins by faith. And by faith, I receive your eternal, everlasting life. God, thank you for making me a part of your spiritual family in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, or if you rededicated your life to Christ, I would love to hear from you. My email is pastorbang at faithfamilychurch.com. And once I receive your email, I'll send you a book on what just happened to you, along with a pamphlet called What's Next, which will give you guidance regarding your spiritual walk with God. Again, it was a pleasure having you join us today. And we pray that the rest of your year will be supernatural in every way. And one more thing, if you're in the area, please come and visit us. We'd love to meet you. Otherwise, I hope you'll join us for our next service. Thank you so much for joining us today for this message. We trust that you are fed, strengthened, and ready to fight the good fight of faith. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and share this message so we can reach more people to fulfill our mission of strengthening families through God's word. Let us know in the comments below how this message touched your life. We would love to hear from you. Continue to feed yourself by spending time with God and reading his word. God wants you to know that he is for you, not against you. We love you, we're praying for you and your family, and we'll see you next time.